Our story today is called Atenaise. It was written by Kate Chopin. Here is Barbara Klein with the story. Atenaise went away one morning to visit her parents, ten miles back on the Bon Dieu River in Louisiana. She did not return in the evening, and Cazot, her husband, was worried. Cazot expressed his worries to his servant, Felicité, who served him dinner. He ate alone by the light of a coal-oil lamp. Felicité stood nearby like a restless shadow. Only married two months, and she has her head turned already to leave? It is not right, she said. Cazot shrugged his shoulders. Felicité's opinion of his wife's behavior after two months of marriage did not matter to him. He was used to being alone and did not mind a night or two of it. Cazot stood up and walked outside. The night was beginning to deepen and gather black around the groups of trees in the yard. Far away, he could hear the sound of someone playing an accordion. Nearby, a baby was crying. Cazot's horse was waiting, saddled. He still had much farm work to do before bedtime. He did not have time to think about Atenais, but he felt her absence like a deep pain. Before he slept that night, Cazot was visited by an image of Atenais's pale young face with its soft lips and sensual eyes. The marriage had been a mistake. He had only to look into her eyes to feel that, to sense her growing dislike of him. But the marriage could not be undone, and he was ready to make the best of it, and expected the same effort from her. These sad thoughts kept Cazo awake far into the night. The moon was shining, and its pale light reached into the room. It was still outside, with no sound except the distant notes of the accordion. Atenais did not return the next day, although her husband sent a message to do so through her brother, Monteclin. On the third day, Cazot prepared his horse and went himself in search of her. Atenaise's parents, the Michets, lived in a large home owned by a trader who lived in town. The house was far too big for their use. Upstairs, the rooms were so large and empty that they were used for parties. A dance at the Michet home and a plate of Madame Michet's gumbo were pleasures not to be missed. Madame Michet was sitting on the porch outside the house. She stood up to greet Cazot. She was short and fat with a cheery face, but she was clearly tense as Cazot arrived. Monteclin was there, too. But he was not uneasy. He made no effort to hide his dislike of Cazot. Dirty pig, he said under his breath as Cazot climbed the stairs to the porch. Monteclin disliked Cazot for refusing to lend him money long ago. Now that this man was his sister's husband, he disliked him even more. Michet and his oldest son were away. They both respected Cazot and talked highly of him. 
Cazot shook hands with Madame Michet, who offered him a chair. Athenais had shut herself in her room. You know, nothing would do last night, Madame Michet said. Athenais just had to stay for a little dance. The boys would not let their sister leave. Cazot shrugged his shoulders to show he knew nothing about last night. Didn't Monteclin tell you we were going to keep Athenais? she asked. But Monteclin had told him nothing. And how about the night before? asked Cazot. And last night, do you have dances every night? Madame Michet laughed and told her son to go tell Athenais her husband had arrived. Monteclin did not move. You know as well as I do that it is no use to tell Athenais anything, said Monteclin. You and Pa have been talking to her since Monday. When Athenais said she was not returning to Cazo, she meant it. Two fiery red spots rose to Cazo's cheeks. What Monteclin said was true. Upon arriving home, Athenais had announced she was there to stay. It was difficult for her to understand why she had married. Girls were just expected to get married. And she did like Cazot. Monteclin had asked Athenais to explain herself. He had asked her if Cazot abused her or if he drank too much. No, Athenais had said. It is just being married that I hate. I do not like being Mrs. Cazot. I want to be Athenais Miche again. I do not like living with a man, all his clothing everywhere, and his ugly bare feet. At the time, Monteclin had been sorry his sister had no serious evidence to use against Cazot. And now there was Cazot himself looking like he wanted to hit Monteclin. Cazot stood up and went inside the house to his wife's room. Athenais, get ready, he said quietly. It is late and we do not have time to lose. Athenais was not prepared for his calm request. She felt a sense of hopelessness about continuing to rebel against the idea of marriage. She gathered her hat and gloves. Then she walked downstairs past her brother and mother, got on her horse, and rode away. Cazot followed behind her. It was late when they reached home. Cazot once more ate dinner alone. Athenais sat in her room crying. Athenais's parents had hoped that marriage would bring a sense of responsibility so deeply lacking in her character. No one could understand why she so hated her role as wife. Cazot had never spoken angrily to her, or called her names, or failed to give her everything she wanted. His main offense seemed to be that he loved her, and Athenais was not a woman to be loved against her will. At breakfast, Athenais complained to her husband. Why did you have to marry me when there were so many other girls to choose from? she asked. And it is strange that if you hate my brother so much, why would you marry his sister? I do not know what any of them have to do with it, Cazo said. I married you because I loved you. 
I guess I was fool to think I could make you happy. I do not know what else to do but make the best of a bad deal and shake hands over it. It now seemed to Atenaise that her brother was the only friend left to her in the world. Her parents had turned from her, and her friends laughed at her. But Monteclin had an idea for securing his sister's freedom. After some thought, Atenaise agreed to his plan. The next morning, Cazot woke up to find his wife was gone. She had packed her belongings and left in the night. Cazot felt a terrible sense of loss. It was not new. He had felt it for weeks. He realized he had missed his chance for happiness. He could not think of loving any other woman and could not imagine Atenais ever caring for him. He wrote her a letter stating that he did not want her back unless she returned of her own free will. Atenais had escaped to the big city of New Orleans. She was staying at a private hotel that Monteclin had chosen and paid to rent for a month. A woman named Sylvie owned the hotel and took good care of Atenais. Atenais soon became friends with Mr. Gouvernai, who was also staying at the hotel. This friendship helped her feel less lonely about missing her family. But Mr. Gouvernai soon started to fall in love with Atenais. He knew she was uninformed, unsatisfied, and strong-willed, but he also suspected that she loved her husband, although she did not know it. Bitter as this belief was, he accepted it. Atenais's last week in the city was coming to an end. She had not found a job and was too homesick to stay any longer. Also, she had not been feeling well. She complained in detail about her sickness to Sylvie. Sylvie was very wise, and Atenais was very stupid. Sylvie very calmly explained to Atenais that she was feeling sick because she was pregnant. Atenais sat very still for a long time thinking about this new information. Her whole being was overcome with a wave of happiness. Then she stood up ready to take action. She had to tell her mother and Cazot. As she thought of him, a whole new sense of life swept over her. She could not wait to return to him. The next day, Atenais spent traveling home. When she arrived at Cazot's, he lifted her out of the horse carriage, and they held each other tight. The country night was warm and still, except for a baby crying in the distance. Listen, Cazot! said Atenais. How Juliet's baby is crying. Poor darling. I wonder what is the matter with it. You have heard the story Atenais by Kate Chopin. Your storyteller was Barbara Klein. This story was adapted and produced by Dana DeMange. Our story today is called